afternoon and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us today and welcome home no matter if you are here in our church or watching online. We are gathered to celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings may be found on page 10 of your bulletin, which will act as our worship aid. You will also find our common prayers within this worship aid, including the Gloria and Creed on page 5. Please remember to take the bulletin with you when you leave today, as we cannot use them again. We are blessed to have you here again at St. John the Evangelist. We hope you will understand some of the changes we must make in order to have a safe and respectful mass environment. One, please stay a, social, a respectful social distance from other individuals and families. Two, please hold your generous gifts for our parish family until the end of mass. We will not be passing a basket during mass, but an usher will be at the exit doors of the church to receive your offering as you depart. Three, please do not touch anyone but your family during the sign of peace. Four, please leave your mask on until after you receive the body of Christ in your hand. You can then move the mask to consume the host. And five, please do not congregate after mass. We want to keep you all safe and healthy, so continue directly to your vehicle when mass concludes. In order to provide a safe and appropriate faith environment for our parish family, St. John the Evangelist will be establishing a temporary adoration chapel within our parish activity center Rome room. We will have adoration available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Access to Rome will be provided via our fobs, just like adoration chapel at the church was prior to the closure. If you have not received your fob yet, please come to the front office during our business hours, Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., and we will provide you with one. More details, including the policies for using our temporary adoration chapel, can be found on page 16 of the bulletin. Would you please kindly take a moment to ensure that your cell phone is powered off? Thank you, and thanks also for respecting the holy integrity of the Mass by remaining through our closing hymn. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Paul. Would you now please turn to the front page of the bulletin and join me in praying our parish prayer for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for all creation. In the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth, and all teachers of peace who inspire the many faith traditions. Help me and all the people of the world learn how to replace hate, war, oppression, and division with love, peace, freedom, and reconciliation. Help me to embody your love in my relationships with my family, friends, strangers, even my enemies. I commit myself to the sacred task throughout my life, so let it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please rise and join in singing our processional hymn found on page 11 of the bulletin, Seek Ye First, page 11 of the bulletin. Thank you. 
And let us begin on this, uh, this beautiful uh, Saturday evening in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we prepare to celebrate and to enter into the sacred and profound mysteries, let's pause for a moment and call to mind all of our sins. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all of us sinners. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, you plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on each one of us. Forgive us all of our sins. Bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. And the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way to hold fast even more to those things that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you request it. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now and after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, Comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Steps I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Amen. 
Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them and the angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Just imagine if Almighty God appeared to you in a dream and he asked you, what do you want? That's what happens in the first reading. Almighty God appears to Solomon in a dream. Now, of course, he phrases the question uh, slightly differently. He says to Solomon, ask of me anything you wish and I will give it to you. But really, he's simply saying, what do you want? It's a profound question. Jesus says that to the mother of James and John when she approaches him in scripture. What do you want? And we remember that she tells Jesus that she wants her two sons to sit one on his left, the other at his right, when he comes into his kingdom. What do we want? The ultimate question for you and me, and whether we know it or not, the researchers tell us that how we spend our time reveals who we are, what we love, and what we want. And the researchers track how the average human being spends most of his day. The researchers tell us that the average human being is going to live 79 years on this earth. And out of those 79 years on this earth, the average person is going to spend 33 years either sleeping or resting. And the researchers tell us that the average person is going to spend 13 years, two months, now these are full years, working. And 11 and a half years are going to be devoted to screen time. That's a combination of social media and television. The researchers also tell us that we're going to spend four and a half full years of our life eating. Some people more other people less. Three and a half years on vacation, one year and a half exercising. Of course, some people more, other people less. Another year and a half socializing. And then the researchers tell us that on average, if we add it all up, if we add up all these various activities and we total them, we still have eight years and two months left over to do whatever we like. 
So the question is, how are we going to spend that free time, all that free personal time, eight years and two months? How are we going to spend it? What are we going to do with that time? Who are we going to spend it with? Huh. I guess we return to the, the original question. What do we want? It's almost as if Almighty God appears to each one of us in a dream and asks each one of us the same question that he asked Solomon. What do you want? Well, all I know is if Almighty God ever appeared to me in a dream and he asked me what he would like to give me, if Almighty God ever appeared to me in a dream and said, ask of me anything you wish and I will give it to you, I think there's only one answer. I'd simply say, give me Jesus. Because with Jesus, you get all the rest. You see, the beauty of Christ is, with Jesus, you get everything you could ever hope for. You get everything you could ever want. You get everything you could ever imagine. Or as scripture tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be given to you beside. Or maybe to put it in another way, there's an old story about the Baron Fitzgerald. And the Baron Fitzgerald lives right outside of London. And the Baron Fitzgerald has everything a man could ever want. He has this extensive art collection. He collects all the great masters. Rembrandt, Caravaggio, Fra Angelico, El Greco, just to name a, a few. But more importantly, he married the love of his life. He married his high school sweetheart, Margaret. And he has one son, a nine-year-old son, Robert, who's the apple of his eye. Robert, he simply adores. So life is grand for the Baron Fitzgerald. But then, out of nowhere, tragedy strikes. The love of his life, Margaret, develops a terminal illness, and she dies rather suddenly. And then, only nine months later, Robert, his nine-year-old son, develops terminal cancer, and he dies within the year. Baron Fitzgerald is grief-stricken. He's inconsolable. But his lawyer comes to him and says, Baron, you're not getting any younger and you have this extensive art collection, I think it would be prudent to make a will. And so the Baron does this. But uh, many say the Baron dies a year later and the cause was a broken heart. And so after the Baron dies, the lawyer goes right to the letter of the law, goes right by the will, and it says in the, uh, the will, that after the Baron Fitzgerald's death, there'll be an extensive art collection at Sotheby's in London. And that's what happens. There's an auctioneer there, and it's announced, and uh, prestigious art collectors from all over the world and museum curators, they come from far and wide to bid on some of this exquisite, this priceless art. And uh, the auctioneer begins, and he reads right from the will, and he says, uh, it stipulates right here in the, uh, the Baron Fitzgerald's will that the first painting should be a work called My Beloved Son. And they bring out this painting, and it's of poor quality. It's done by an amateur artist. It's a painting of the Baron's son, Robert, the nine-year-old son, 
who died suddenly. And the, it's a cheap frame, and the canvas is a little bit tatted, and some of these highbrow art collectors start to roll their eyes and curl their lips. There's ripples of laughter. They start to snicker. They can't hold back the laughter because they see this painting as beneath their high standards. And so it's a bit embarrassing. He says, do we have any offers? And no one even dares raise their hand out of embarrassment. But then uh, he says, well, the auctioneer says, How, we'll begin at, uh, let's say, 20 British pounds. And he hits the gavel. Again, no one raises their hand. But there's a, a little old lady in the back row. Uh, she's the Baron's nanny, Robert's nanny, Elizabeth, and she's digging through her purse. She's trying to count up all the money she has in her purse, and she raises her hand. She says, ah, 23 and a half pounds. It's everything I have. Now, Elizabeth loved Robert. She took care of him since he was a, a baby. She was at his bedside when Robert was dying. And so the auctioneer says, any other offers? Looks around, there's still more laughter in the crowd. Uh, the auctioneer says, going once, going twice, going three times, hits the gavel and says, sold to that little woman in the back row. But then the auctioneer says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it stipulates right here in the Baron's will that Whoever purchases the first painting of my beloved son inherits the entire collection. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful day. And so it is with all of us. When we give everything we have out of love for the Father's only son, a funny thing happens we get everything back in return. and profess the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the goodness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, turning to Jesus Christ, who gives us more than we could ever imagine, let us humbly approach him with all our worries and troubles, all our hopes and dreams. That every member of the church will grow in prayerfulness so that their relationship with God is strengthened and their concern for others ever more compassionate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our youth and young adults will value the gift of wisdom, as did young King Solomon, and be guided by it in the decision which they need to make. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our parish family of St. John, that we will bring to God in prayer everyone who has asked us to pray for them, along with those who feel unable to pray or do not know how to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our troops and their families, for first responders and healthcare workers, for the unborn and their parents, for all victims of abuse, that they be created anew in the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For worshipers who are praying online, that all may be comforted, comforted and assured that we are all one body of Christ, experiencing God's presence in the same sacrifice of the Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have recently died, especially for Augusta Ferrara, Kathleen Henry, and Jonathan Ox that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for Janet and Jerome Paul Vanderhorst, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray also in a special way for Harry and Patricia Witt, for Harry and Patricia Witt, the Witt family, the Lee family, for Darlene Felice, for Darlene Felice, and for Kathy Maxwell, who uh, passed away recently. Uh, Kathy Maxwell and her family, for Samantha Morrill, Bo uh, Brian Neri, for Steve and Marion Nickel, for the Vespo and Daughter family, Fred and Joan, Roy Owens, Jonathan Ox, Elaine and Mike Buscemi, for Tom Gillen and the Gillen family, for the Beebe, for Karen Beebe, the Beebe family, for uh, JP and Donna and uh, JP's uh, family, for Kate McGrory, for John. John McCann, the McCann family, for Richard Duke, Anthony and Kathy, and for all of you, all your family members, let's pause now, for all of your loved ones and all those intentions that each one of you holds in the silence of your hearts. We lift them up to the beautiful Queen of Heaven, Mary, the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask all these prayers in the name of Mary's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. As a reminder, please hold your offertory gifts for until the end of Mass. An usher will be at the exit doors of the narthex to receive your generosity. Our offertory hymn can be found on page 12 of the bulletin. How lovely is your dwelling place, page 12. Joy to the living 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through this powerful working of your grace, these, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness into the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the beautiful Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you our holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so now, with all the angels and archangels, with all the martyrs and the saints, with all the powers and hosts of heaven, we declare in one voice the song of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory 
mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Frank, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, in a special way, Janet and Jerome Paul Vanderhorst, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Janet and Jerome Paul Vanderhorst, who are united with your son Jesus in a death like his, that Janet and Jerome may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint jo Joseph, her spouse, with St. Peter and Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all worry and fear and anxiety and distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign, a socially distant sign of peace.
mingling in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Understood 
from the need to be accepted from the fear of being lonely deliver me oh God deliver me oh God and I shall not want no I shall not want when I taste your goodness I shall From the fear of serving others And from the fear of death or trial From the fear of humility Yes, deliver me, oh God, and I shall not want, no, I shall not want, when I taste your goodness, I shall not want, no, I shall We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant, we pray, that this holy gift, which he himself gave us, 
with love beyond all telling, may profit us for our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each one of you and all your loved ones, all your family members, living and deceased, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a wonderful weekend. Please join us in our closing hymn found on page 13 of the bulletin. Blessed are they, page 13.